Ayo, welcome to our little tutorial how to connect to Ninjam via Reaper. I assume you already have Reaper downloaded and guess what, you're gonna install it. You get this window, you agree to the license. Take care of your audio path of your destination folder if you want or the default as well is fine. You do not want to do a portable install for now. You can do that later on your USB device or something, very handy feature. You just click next and you get to this screen. And usually here under compressed file support, MP3 isn't checked. Same as additional functionality, rear root ASIO driver might not be checked. So it looks somewhat like that. If you see any of these um, check boxes grayed out, then just click them and make sure they are green and all checked. Nothing here that would anything that would do any harm to you <coughs> or to your system. So you install it, usually goes pretty fast. And after you installed it, of course, you want to Reaper. You want to uh, run Reaper right now. You want the Reaper to run, right? Um, after that, you go to Options. That's the first thing you need to do. Go to Options and Preferences or simply press Control P. Under Options, Preferences, you go to Audio, Device. And this is a very significant thing that you have to check here, that you have to take care about for Reaper to be able to um, have any inputs and any outputs. If you don't do this, it probably has nothing to say. So the Reaper probably doesn't have anything to say. So you want to check your ASIO drivers. If your sound card does not come with ASIO drivers, then please go and download the ASIO for all driver and install it, of course, while Reaper is closed. And then you go to this pull down menu here and choose ASIO for all. If your sound card comes with ASIO, then you just choose the ASIO driver. Here you specify your sound card, in my case, in the M. Audio Delta 1010. Um, after that, you need to enable the inputs and tell Reaper which inputs to use. I think the easiest thing is to say either you go from the first to the very last of your devices, which is listed here, or you just take the first two one. I mean, if you like to, you can as well say Reaper should start using it three and the last one should be four and the rest is reserved for something else. However, you prefer to set this up. Choose some inputs. Very important. Same for the output range. You choose, I choose in this case, from one to ten. Very simple. Then I usually request the sample rate of 44.1, which asks my sound card to go to 44.1 to set to 44.1 hertz, uh, kilohertz sample rate. And then you click apply and OK. And right before I forget it, under options and preferences, before you leave that, um, you will have to go to audio and MIDI devices and actually enable your MIDI input by right clicking your device and checking the box enable input and enable input for control messages. Otherwise your wheels or whatever controller you are using will not be received. So, so both of them have to be checked. It has to look like this enabled and control. The same you have to do for your output device. Usually it comes like this. It's disabled and you wonder what's going on here. You need to know this. Enable your inputs and outputs. It has to look like this enabled here and up there it's enabled and control to have your controllers activated. Then you can press apply and close this thing. Then you're done with the preferences. After that, you can go to track and insert a new track 
or you can con oops you can press control t or in the empty space make a right click and insert new track and then you get a new track and this new track you want to right click the record button and enable record input or MIDI and then you choose your device if you want to have a mono device you choose one of your mono devices or if you want a stereo pair e.g. for keyboards or drums whatnot then you choose a stereo device uh, mind that Reaper is having odd numbers and it offers you to as well choose input 2 and 3 which is kind of unusual usually you would have in 1, 2 and the next would be in 3, 4 with Reaper the next is 2 and 3 uh, which gives you certain a certain flexibility just mind choose your input device if you want to input MIDI say from a keyboard and you want to uh, use Reaper as a MIDI machine or use a VST device or something like that uh, you will of course have to choose your device and say either all channels all the channels you want and then you find the record monitoring button right here this is the record monitor button and it has three stages one is green one is yellow and one is off what you want is the green state that you actually hear what's coming in so now it's coming now you set up for for reaper you could theoretically record whatever you want on your first track now it's coming the interesting part we are setting up for ninja in ninja for ninja you have to implement the plugin you do this on the fx master in the master section means you add ninja as a plugin into the effects chain of the master for this you simply click the fx and then you get two windows one of them is your fx master track and shows you what you got in there and the other window is usually super large let me see if i can make that smaller zip and zip so and now you can see your plugins you go to Cocos and choose Ria Ninja and you either double click it double click it or you simply press OK you press OK and then you show the Re Ninja console if this isn't already popped up and you get to this window make sure that it is activated either here or there you can see it's the same make sure it's activated then you can close this window now here looks pretty empty till now um, what we do want is to add a local channel yeah and this will then transmit everything that's going on your stereo bus one and two it would make sense that you name your instrument there that others see what you are doing there I mean they will hear it but it's always nice to have it uh, set appropriate so for now let's say it's vocals and this button here is ultimately important this button decides that whatever you whatever you play is being sent into the ninja system or not so if this button is off no one will ever hear you if this button is on everyone will hear whatever you do no matter if you turn down your volume or even mute yourself these controls here are only for your own hearing if you put this to zero it still transmits at full level right so keep this in mind the xmit button is really important and if you want to tune for example also it doesn't help that you mute yourself it doesn't help that you put yourself to zero level 
you will have to deactivate the XMIT button. So now you want to connect to an InJump server. So you go to File, Connect, and you want to connect anonymously to the open servers. And yeah, we connect to this one. You simply double click it and it will ask you for the server to agree to the server license. You accept and see you're in. Now, not to disturb them, I'm gonna set XMIC, XMIT to zero, to off. And now you see, you have here a little chat which you can um, communicate with your buddies in the room. Uh, here you see the appropriate levels and level meters from your friends which are incoming and you can in these cases where something is stereo or looks like stereo sometimes you have to sometimes it's written left and right so you have to uh, put this to the appropriate left and right and then choose your levels you want this a bit louder and this a bit softer and this a bit louder again and that's about it, voila, you're in Ninja. If you want to hear the metronome, then you have to unmute it and play and have a lot of fun.